What's up, YouTube? Hope everybody's having a blessed and healthy week. If you're in quarantine, I'm sorry. Hopefully we get up out of this soon because we're all really bored and I'm starting to lose my mind. I wanna go shopping. But today, I'm not shopping. Today, we're gonna make some mahi. I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and easy sun-dried tomato basil mahi recipe. So easy, so simple, very few ingredients, and extra delicious. And it has this sauce that you can pour on top at the end, or you could dip some French bread into it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make some garlic bread on the side, and then dip it into the sauce. Yes, sauce is boss. So, for the ingredients, I got two little packets of mahi. I get these from Costco. They come in a big bag of like, I don't know, like 12 of them maybe. It's only like 20 bucks. It's actually a really good price. I'm not even hating. And when I go back, I'm going to pick up two. I have four chopped up um, garlic cloves. If you want, you can go ahead and use already minced garlic. I just like fresh garlic, so that's what I'm going to do. I have one whole shallot chopped. It was a really small shallot, but that doesn't really matter as long as you use one to, you know, um, just to make the sauce. Last time I did this, I, I used red onion because I went to three different stores and they didn't have shallots, so that's what happens. You can't find shallots, use a red onion. But I'm telling you, shallots just make things sweeter. I don't exactly know why, but I love it. I have six. Um, basil leaves that I julienned, 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 I'm not sure, but basically that means I put them in slices. So I take the leaves and I roll them up and turn them to the side and chop them down like that. And then I have sun-dried tomatoes, a few tablespoons. I'm not even sure. I just pulled a bunch out of the jar. They were already in oil, so I drained uh, most of the oil and then they come julienned. So I also have salt. Oh, sorry. Pepper, salt, salt and pepper. So let me move the camera and um, we'll get started on showing you how to get this done. All right. Okay, guys. Totally forgot to tell you. Two tablespoons of butter. Two. That's it. One to um, cook the mahi in and then one to make the sauce. So you need the two tablespoons separated. So here I put the mahi on a paper towel because you want to dry your mahi. You always want to dry your fish or dry your chicken before you're going to go ahead and fry or sear it so that you get a nice, good, crispy sear on it or else it will steam your protein opposed to searing it and getting those nice, good sear marks. You know, everybody wants a good sear mark. So once you do that and just dry it off a little bit, then we're just gonna put salt and pepper on both of the sides. Salt. <clears throat> Little pepper. Flip it over. Oh, well, I like to push it in. You know, push it over. And then we're just gonna do the same thing all over again. Salt. And pepper. And that's it for seasonings because the flavor that comes through with these shallots mixed with the garlic, mixed with the butter and the sun-dried tomatoes and the basil is just amazing. You really don't need a whole lot of seasoning for your fish. Just salt and pepper is efficient enough. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move the camera to the stove and show you how to start cooking this. Okay, so I have my pan turned on to, I don't know, medium low, medium, medium, we'll just say medium, yeah, to medium, cool, my oven smells funny, I have my oven turned on too because I'm about to make some garlic bread when um, I put you guys on pause when the fish is cooking. So once the pan is hot, I'm going to put the butter, so I'm just going to put the butter now. Just one tablespoon of the butter. I like getting the, um, the cubes for this because then I can just slice it really easy when it, you know, for the tablespoons. It just makes my life a little easier. But, you know, if you don't get the cube, that's fine too. You know, I'm not a hater. You could just, oops. 
So I got a little paper in there. Oops. 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 What happens? So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it around. Even though my fish is... Whoa! My kid's having a meltdown. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. So I'm just going to melt this down. Alright. I'm going to wait till it all the way melts down. It's almost there. Alright, so my pan should be hot by now. I know I don't think you can see it like on the camera, but my butter is starting to like have these little bubbles. That's what you want. That's how you know your pan is hot enough for this. You know, you don't want to overcook fish and it's really easy to overcook the fish. So you just want to make sure that your pan is hot enough to um, make it pretty per se. So I'm going to go ahead and put the fish, I'm going to put it down, and then put this one down, and I'm just going to leave it there and set my timer for four minutes. After four minutes, I'll come and flip it and cook it for another four minutes, and then we're going to remove it and make the sauce. I'll be back in four minutes. Okay, so it's almost been four minutes. My timer's about to go off, so I thought I'd start my video. So, here we have my fish. I'm just going to flip it. Be pretty, try to be gentle about this. It's pretty. Woo! And that's pretty. But I'm just going to swoosh my pan around just to get that butter all over the pan again. And I'm going to set it for another four minutes. So I'll be back. Alright, so we're at four minutes again. And the fish is done. So I'm going to remove the fish. The mahi. I'm going to remove the mahi. You could probably do this with any fish. You could do it with salmon. Oh, oh. you could do it with salmon. It'd probably be really good. Or cod. Or tilapia. But I'm really burnt out on tilapia. So I'm not yeah, suggesting yeah, yeah. it. I was, I was over your you know. Right. So, oh my goodness. Why can't I fix okay. this up? Okay. Look at that, that beautiful sear. Beautiful sear. So I'm just going to take it out and move it. And, um, it's okay that we have all these brown bits on the bottom because they will get picked up. So, I turn the heat to low for now. We're going to add the other one tablespoon of butter. And let that melt down. I did it again, you guys. I did it again. I missed a piece of the paper. Gross. Okay, so we got that. Okay, so butter's melted. Put your shallot in. We are going to cook the shallot until it is a beautiful golden color. Not burnt, but, you know, to where you can tell that it is cooked. Or it's almost done cooking. Let me rephrase that. Because it moves fast. You know, once or, you know, things go quickly because you don't want to keep your uh, garlic in there too long because garlic burns and then it's bitter and it's gross. And then you don't want to keep your um, basil in here too long because cooked basil, you want to keep it fragrant. You know, so, man, if you guys could smell that shallot, just the shallot and the butter is just phenomenal. So good. So good. Okay. So you see how they're little brown? They're a little kind of browned on the edges. Now I'm going to put all my garlic in. And we're going to just 
just mix those two. Oh my god, the smell of that is just oh, amazing. Now remember, this is on low heat. I, I go up one to eight, and I am almost on a three. Like, temperature-wise, temperature-wise. I'm cute. I'm cuter than a three, let's just say. Anyways. So we're... Now... Mmm, we're going to go ahead and add the tomatoes. And just cook those for about another minute. They're in my refrigerator, so I just want them to get warmed through. going to Woo, smells so good now I'm gonna add the basil actually I'm only gonna add half of the basil to the actual pan while it's cooking because I'm gonna save the other half of the basil for after Because I like the, the taste of actual, of actual like fresh basil. So cooked down basil is good. You know, like it wilts and stuff. And it's still beautiful. And it has this beautiful green color and everything. But the aromatics of a fresh basil are just... I just like it. I feel like it's a palate cleanser. Because it's just so precise. Kind of like mint or coffee. It's just a good palate cleanser. So... That's how I think of basil. It may not really be a palate cleanser, but it is for me. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the stove off. I'm going to leave it on the burner that it was turned on, but turn it off because you don't want to burn your stuff, right? And then I'm going to put my fish back in there. Because I don't need to cook my fish more. My fish is already cooked, but... I want it to, you know, get some flavor from my little sauce mixture here. And then now, I'm just going to take it out, put it on a plate, top it with all the goodness, and I'll see you in just a second. Alright, so my food is all ready. I just have to slice up my garlic bread, and then it's time to eat. So, this is what our plate looks like. He's beautiful. See that fish? See the topping? See how I put the fresh basil right on top? I have mine on a superfood salad. He didn't want salad, so his is just plain. He'll just eat french fries. Probably like 95% of the loaf, so I'm not really too worried for this. But... It's time to make sure that it tastes delicious. So let me get a fork. Well, that sucked. My battery died. My light died. My dog barked. My phone fell. At least I had it paused right before I was grabbing a fork. So, you know, we're all good now. I got everything plugged in and all just for another, like, 45 seconds. Anyways, taste test. Taste a nice piece of this beautiful mahi down here. Get some of the fresh basil, some of the tomato. Mmm. You can usually tell by the way Perfect. they shoot. See how it's uh, mm. really slow, semi-automatic. I want to make that sauce and just like quadruple it somehow or maybe add olive oil and then put it over a pasta. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That would be so good if I put it on top of a pasta. Uh, you could make this actually a little bit healthier if you wanted to. You could use G butter instead of uh, regular butter. Um, 
Other than that, I don't really see another healthier way to make this. I really don't. But if that's what you wanted to do, that's what you could do. Anyways, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss anything going down in this kitchen. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you recreate this, I would love to see it and I would love to share it with all my peoples on social media. So please tag me so I can show the world how amazing you are. Anyways, I hope you all have a blessed week. Stay healthy. No coronavirus. You know, do what you need to do. Hopefully everybody gets back to work soon. If you're not working, if you are working, you're a hero and God bless you. All right. See y'all next time. Bye.